Sign up today for a seven-day free trial at alerts.chartguys.com. Hey, crypto traders, checking in on the space. So we're going to have a really interesting next 24 hours where we're going to get a lot of information. What we're looking at right now is after this double bottom on Bitcoin, can we break the key daily resistance of 11,100, which is as far as the bulls got the last time we bounced off 9,000, or do we reject from that level and form the equilibrium? In the previous video, I pointed out how I hope we form an equilibrium. I'm personally all cash still, and I'd like to get back in the swing of trading this coming week looking to enter on a daily higher low. If we see a bull break, it's the potential setup for a cup and handle scenario here where we have the left side of resistance, healthy consolidation, inability to break resistance, at least initially. If the bulls can hold this 12 and 26 period here on the daily, this exponential moving average that's about to get a bull cross, if they can hold that level on this consolidation, that leaves the possibility of a bull flag. So that's a nice visual guide with where that's lining up and if we lose that level, then more of a equilibrium will take place and it will take longer to play out. So if we lose that level, we're going to look to pull back to the upper 9,000s into early this coming week. And then perhaps we'll look for a break by next weekend. Whereas if the bulls were able to hold this higher low and hold that exponential support, the continuation scenario is much more likely. Whichever way we break, the bulls certainly have proven themselves. The size of this bounce off of this double bottom, if it were going to be a weak bounce that were anybody's game in this equilibrium, we would have topped out in the low 10,000 range. But the bulls got some really nice follow through. So regardless of whether we break today or consolidate first, we're still looking bullish. We're still holding the weekly exponential supports and it's up to the bears to prove something to us. The burden of proof is on the bears after the size of this bounce. Back a week ago, the burden of proof was on the bulls because we came all the way down to support and it was a double bottom and we didn't get much of a convincing bounce initially until about three days into that bounce, bulls really started picking things up. So they proved themselves and now it's back on the bears. So the four hour time frame has been lost, the uptrend I should say. The last little higher low was here at 10,690, still grinding these exponential supports. So again, if we lose these exponential supports and if they make a bear cross, the 12 and 26 period to the downside, that increases the odds of the daily equilibrium and further consolidation playing out. Cooling off on the longer term time frames, the 12 hour chart was really extended here. The question now is, is the 12 hour a bull flag or not? That's pretty much what we're looking for to be answered over the next 24 hours. ETH. So ETH is still in the same kind of pattern. We have the equilibrium with our low, high of the bounce, higher low, and so far, still a lower high under 236.58. So we're patiently waiting for a break. And how Bitcoin breaks is likely going to dictate how Ethereum and Litecoin break as well. Still well within this pattern. We are currently about $22, $23 above support. And we're about $16, $17 below resistance. So about in the midway point of that equilibrium. But again, what stands out is this daily time frame dropping down back to test the low for the ETH BTC pairing chart. And that's increasing the odds of the weekly bear flag that we're looking at here. There is no sign of a momentum shift. The bulls rejected out of double top. They couldn't get over the daily exponential resistances. So the bears of this chart have kept full control, which means Bitcoin is still a better place to be as a bull than Ethereum is. And if we're looking bearish, then we want to be looking at Ethereum or Litecoin bearish because of this chart. Until the bulls can convincingly break 2246, that will remain the case. Litecoin's the same thing. Let's just look at the Litecoin BTC chart while we're on the subject. We double topped at 994. And again, it was a bull break with a lack of follow through, which means zoom out and look for the potential of a flag. So the weekly bear flag is a possibility, essentially what it's going to take for both ETH and LTC Bitcoin pairing charts is to hold our low and then break the high. And that's going to take a couple days to play out, in my opinion, at the soonest. Just change charts there by accident. So LTC, BTC have to hold the low of eight and have to break nine, nine, eight in order to shift momentum. Otherwise, the bears keep complete control. So the LTC, BTC chart has been pulling back for three days while Bitcoin's been going up. And it's a bit of a back and forth game because Litecoin stood out strong right here. July 31st, we said, wow, that's a big bull move. Bitcoin has hardly even moved yet. Litecoin could be the first name to break 106. 
And it was definitely a fake out because that double top rejection, again, we did break resistance on this chart, but just barely, and then straight into consolidation. So don't feel bad if you did get faked out about that because three, four days ago, I definitely would have been looking for Litecoin to be a lead bull to break this daily equilibrium. And now it's just a picture perfect tightening range. So our lower high is clearly set at 101.54. We got within 5% of a bull break and now we're pulling back and we're currently about $8 above support and about $10 below resistance. So again, also right around that midway point. Nice, clear equilibrium. This is probably the smoothest of the equilibriums that we're going to look at on the daily time frame. XRP, also still in the tightening range. Again, not as smooth. Higher low is 2988. And we've got resistance at 328 and 34. And we're just getting tighter and tighter. You can even call our lower high here at 323. So we've got three lower highs, two higher lows, and the bulls are hoping that 308 is going to be a higher low as well. So things getting really tight. Let's see if we can get a little bit more clarity on the 12 hour time frame. And that's not really giving it to us. Essentially, we're just going to wait patiently for the, the break in Bitcoin and see how these other names compare and how their breakouts compare or breakdowns, I should say, either direction, depending on which direction we go. Still battling this daily 12 period exponential resistance on XRP. That's been the case for almost an entire month. Three weeks, essentially. That's a long time. It's a lot of rejections. But a break is imminent. Look at the volume drop off. We're going to see a volume spike sometime in the next two to three days, I would say. And that will indicate which direction the break is occurring. BNB also tightening up. So low, high of the bull move, higher low. Our lower high was already set at 28.76. Now the bulls have to hold 26.20 and break that resistance level to change this daily trend. Nice little increase in bull volume and decrease in bear volume. That's what the bulls want to see but they need to shift momentum today or tomorrow and head back up to break 2876 resistance. And looking at the weekly time frame, it's actually the monthly chart where we're looking for the higher low. Monthly consolidation now underway on Binance. Very healthy monthly consolidation, no red flags there. And the daily trend changing bullish is the first early indication, higher risk and higher reward signal that the monthly higher low may be established. So that equilibrium is worth watching. Pretty much every equilibrium that we're looking at, we could see a break. Look, They look likely to me that we'll break within three days. But when I look at Bitcoin on the daily chart, if we were to pull back more significantly, we could stay within this daily equilibrium for you know another six days very easily. We could see three days of pullback down towards 10,000 to set that higher low. So it'll be very interesting have to confirm a downtrend. We lost the uptrend on the four hour. We have to now see a lower high and lower low if we're going to see further pullback. And last, we'll wrap it up with Link. Link bulls did show up with a big upper wick, seeing a nice little recovery attempt. So we got our low, high of the bounce. We did drop to a lower low, came up towards resistance and rejected, but bulls keeping it alive. The fact that we broke support, which was so clear, the double bottom at 205 and saw no follow through is notable. Let's see if the bulls can form a higher low compared to $2 and then break 276 and 284 to change this daily trend. And that would give us our weekly higher low, keeping in mind that using another exchange that has more data, the weekly chart is looking for that higher low to be established. And the daily trend changing will be the indication that weekly higher low has been established. So again, we're going to get a lot of information today over the next 24 hours. And Bitcoin's going to be our guide. If Bitcoin holds this four-hour, 12-period exponential support and heads back up to the recent high, bull's still extremely strong. So it's up to the bears to knock the bulls off their horse a bit. There's that image of bulls riding a horse again. And we'll look for that higher low. And we'll look for healthy daily. It's pretty much, this is why bulls are comfortable. It's pretty much either healthy daily consolidation or a key break of resistance and looking back up at the 2019 high of 13,200. So we'll keep on tap and we'll check in on Monday if we do get a break of this range. I appreciate you watching. Have a good rest of your weekend. Do good things out there and keep your eye on these bulls very close to shifting momentum notably back in their favor. So looking at some of the perennials that I've planted over the past couple weekends, we've got some figs and some raspberries and blueberries and more raspberries. 
These figs are a hardy kind and they'll only end up being about five feet tall, more of a bush. And we'll look at some of the bigger ones here in just a second. But the process of what I did is I just dug a hole and then I took that soil and I would put it in the raised bed. So now the raised beds have a bunch of different colored soil from all over the property with different mineral makeup and all that. And so I would dig the hole, I'd put some manure in it, I'd put some organic fertilizer in there and put the plant in there. And then I would make little moats because we're on a little bit of a slope here. So I made a moat in the back of the plant where water will pool as it comes down the hill. And then in the front of the plant, I made a little moat as well. And then I lined it with rocks. So right in under here, I've got little rocks all lined up to help catch that water as it moves down the slope. And then I put some cardboard down to cover the grass up and then covered the cardboard with wood chips on everything except for the blueberries. I used pine needles on the blueberries because as that breaks down into the soil, it adds acidity and the blueberries like acidic soil. So we'll go look at some other ones that I did. One fig among the ornamentals. We've got this tree starting to flower as well. Still working on the raised beds. Haven't done a whole lot on those as I've been working on the perennial planting. Another couple blueberries here. One of them produces pink berries, which I've never seen before, so that'll be interesting. And this is next to the raspberries and the grapes up there. Over the winter, I'm gonna cover this grass here that's overgrowing with cardboard and snuff it out and maybe put strawberries there for next spring. And then I got three figs. These are gonna be big trees. These are gonna be 20 feet high when they fully grow. So more figs and I used some rocks that I found from around the property, some really cool sandstone and different colors. And I put the bigger rocks again. I did the same thing with the, the bigger rocks and the smaller rocks underneath the mulch to catch some of the water on this slope. And some more, did some blueberries, and then here are these small figs that we did a couple weeks ago. They're starting to get their new growth. And more blueberries, and I planted them here as there's a split in the trees, so hopefully they get enough sunlight. And I just found a hawk feather. That's that. Got a cedar swing set up. My buddy Casey helped me put that together. So a spot to hang out in front of the pond and chill with the ducks. Thank <laughs> you. 